What is up, you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. Welcome back to the history of LEGO Marvel. This is part three in an ongoing series where I cover every single LEGO Marvel set that has ever been released. Now, I started this a long time ago with part one and part two, and part three will take us through the years 2016 through 2018, and man, were there a lot of sets to come out in this window. So, sit back, relax, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more LEGO Super Heroes videos down below, and let's get into breaking down the history of Lego Marvel Part 3. So the journey of this part starts in 2016. We were coming right off the cusp of a huge year in 2015 with Age of Ultron, and so the theme started off with just a little bit of a simmer in January. That gave us sets based off of the Avengers Assemble cartoon, and the first one is the Iron Skull Sub-Attack. This is an awesome set, even by today's standards, and it's shot up in value. It sold for $29.99 originally and had four minifigures that, in one way or another, were basically exclusive, if you count accessories being added to the figures. Of course, that Scuba Iron Man is very, very valuable today, but the Red Skull is a great figure, too. It's always great to get another Hydra agent, and of course, the Captain America with the lenses over his eyes, in my opinion, actually is pretty cool all these years later. The other set that dropped in January was the Avenjet Space Mission. Now, this is a really cool set filled with exclusive minifigures. Now, I love this set because you could actually break the ship apart in certain areas and have, like, little parts come off, like escape pods and stuff like that. Thanos had his little rocket boots. But, of course, it's no surprise that the big draw to this set was those minifigures. We got the iconic Space Iron Man. Captain America with a breathing apparatus, the first ever Lego Captain Marvel, which still looks great today, Hyperion, which is a relatively obscure Marvel character, I feel like this is probably the only time they'll ever include him in a Lego product or set, unless he debuts in the MCU, and of course our first ever Lego Thanos, but he did not come with an Infinity Gauntlet. As far as the MCU is concerned, perhaps the most iconic and memorable movie of 2016 was Captain America Civil War. This was so fun to live through, having you and your friends have to choose a side and, you know, go to the movie theaters and cheer for your side. It's hard to explain if you weren't there, but I just have such amazing memories of this movie. And of course, the airport scene in battle, uh, you know, just lives on. People were jumping out of their seats excited over that. And the Lego sets were really awesome to go with it. The first set we'll talk about is Crossbones Hazard Heist. Now, this is based off of a scene that obviously did not play out quite like this in the movie, but it's definitely good for play value, and to this day, I think the Falcon's Wings that were included here are the best version of Falcon's Wings we've gotten to date. With that being said, I really like the Black Widow here. It's the cheapest way to get Black Widow in this costume as far as, like, the price of a set is concerned. And although Crossbones is not super accurate to either the shows, comics, or really the movie, it's still a pretty nice figure and is definitely a good base for building a custom if you're into that like I am. Here we have the Black Panther Pursuit, which is a really cool set in that it's the first time we ever got Black Panther as a minifigure, and it was the debut of the Winter Soldier coming in an official set. Now, he technically also came out in the airport battle that came out at the same time, but I digress. It's a really awesome set that comes with a helmetless Captain America, which was a nice change of pace. Of course, that Winter Soldier figure is really nice, but the standout is Black Panther himself. It's the only Black Panther as of this video that has had any printing on the horn piece that goes on the top of his head, and while I think he absolutely could have, should have, and really needed arm and leg printing, it's still a great looking figure that has held up all these years later. <laughs> these three figures look pretty great by 2016 standards if you ask me. Now, if you ask a lot of LEGO Marvel fans, they're going to tell you that this is one of the best LEGO Marvel sets of all time, and I would agree. This is the Superhero Airport Battle from Civil War. It retailed for $79.99 and came with seven minifigs plus a giant Ant-Man, and the main build of the set was a scaled-down Avengers Quinjet as well as some cool airport accessories. I absolutely love this set. I think that all of the cool little airport scenery that it comes with is very cool. It makes the set feel like 
you know, it's come to life, it's livable, there's stuff for your characters to fight on and around and knock over, and there's even some cool little Easter eggs here, like these boxes that have AIM on it or Stark Industries. You should check out my review of this set on my channel if you want to see all of the details, but I'll continue to point out that I think that this is one of the better Quinjets, even though it's scaled down compared to some of the other ones. I think for the price that you paid for the set, you got a lot of good value out of this one, and I love the color scheme and just the general sloping of this set itself. Now, the minifigures here are probably the best part. We've got, for Team Captain America, Cap himself, Bucky, Scarlet Witch, and Agent 13, a.k.a. Sharon Carter. And for Iron Man's team, we, of course, get the exclusive Iron Man figure and War Machine. Now, a lot of these figures were exclusive. Pretty much all of them were exclusive, except for Bucky and Cap. But the big thing, no pun intended, for this set that I think a lot of people love is the Giant Man and the micro-sized Ant-Man. These figures are amazing. Of course, the micro-sized Ant-Man isn't posable, but the Giant Man figure is scaled up to be like a enlarged minifigure, basically. They've used this same technique in Harry Potter now, and I think some other places like Ninjago, but it all debuted with this figure, and I love the detail on his belt that his regulator's blue, because Ant-Man becomes blue, or his regulator goes blue when he becomes Giant Man is the better way to word that. And the other cool thing, well, I guess in retrospect, is that this movie got spoiled by this Lego set. I think if this Lego set had come out after the movie or wasn't made at all, the Giant Man reveal would have just blown people's minds. But unfortunately, since these sets came out in March and the movie came out in May, I think a lot of people got it spoiled for them beforehand, myself included, but that doesn't take away from how awesome of a Lego set this is all these years later. Once the Civil War movie actually came out, we got a gift with purchase poly bag from Lego, which was Captain America's motorcycle. Nothing too crazy here, just a kind of interesting historical footnote. And along those lines, we also randomly got this Spider-Man poly bag, Spider-Man vs. the Venom symbiote. And this was really good, I guess, if you like customs and you needed a bunch of Venom heads for some reason. But yeah, I can't find what the price on this was. I vaguely recall seeing this at Walmart, which probably means it was like somewhere between 4 and $5. But yeah, anyways, just wanted to highlight these because we also have to talk about the Mighty Micros next. These were really interesting. They came out in 2016 with their first series, and they were aimed at a younger building audience, but they gave us short-legged, very cartoon-looking versions of comic book styles of characters. So it was an interesting way to get some variations, but this first wave, in my opinion, was probably the weakest of the three. We'll cover the rest as things progress here, but this is where they debuted in the kind of like summer spring wave of 2016. This brings us to June 2016, where we got some amazing Spider-Man sets, and I do mean that literally, because I do think most of these are pretty amazing. At $20, we have the Spider-Man Ghost Rider team-up, and this was the debut of not only Ghost Rider, but Hobgoblin. I'm shocked that this set doesn't go for more these days on the aftermarket, because those two figures are amazing, and I honestly don't know when we would get another Hobgoblin made at this level with the dull molded legs and all the great accessories. And of course, the Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider is pretty dang awesome as well. The weakest set of this wave, in my opinion, is the Spider-Man Doc Ock's Tentacle Trap. Now, the figures here are awesome, and I actually think a lot of the parts are good. I'm just not in love with the build, especially for a big price like $40. With that being said, you can see that it's just a giant hulking Doc Ock mech with all the big arms, and these are among my favorite Doc Ock arms ever. It's just that the set itself, the build itself, is not my favorite, but... As I mentioned before, the minifigures were all pretty darn standout. We had uh, Gwen Stacy's dad, Captain Stacy, White Tiger, relatively obscure character, classic Spider-Man, classic Vulture, the only classic Vulture we've gotten to date, and a really, really great take on a classic Doc Ock. And again, I just love those giant Doc Ock arms with the big hands on the end. You could actually stand him up. And I love the yellow and green build of his, you know, costume look. Fantastic all around. 
And then the best set of this wave, possibly even of the entire year 2016, and a lot of people might even argue it's one of the better Spider-Man sets ever, is the Spider-Man Web Warriors Ultimate Bridge Battle, which retailed for $100 with 1,092 pieces. This thing is amazing, and if you bought multiple of them, you could kind of like mock and link them together to build a bigger bridge, but... Aside from the build being awesome, it came with so many great figures, and of course, it was jam-packed with all kinds of play features and little references and just things that make this set stand out when compared to other LEGO Marvel, Spider-Man sets, and just LEGO sets in general. I think it's just a fantastic set with a great, great build. And of course, as I said, the mini figures were pretty dang amazing. We got another Spider-Man, which was kind of run-of-the-mill. We got an Aunt May, which I believe came in another set down the line. And we also got an incredible Scarlet Spider and Spider-Girl. Not Spider-Woman, of course, Spider-Girl. We got a... Scorpion, who did appear in some other sets down the line. We also got a really amazing Craven the Hunter, which only appeared in this set, and we got a Green Goblin, who only appeared in this set as well, in his classic look, and it's definitely one of my favorite Green Goblins to date as far as the comic interpretations are concerned. What an amazing set. Now, due to spoilers, there was one more Captain America Civil War set that came out later, and that is the Tanker Truck Takedown, which, of course, had a big draw having not only Vision in the set, but Spider-Man. It was the debut of the MCU Spider-Man figure, and if you take a look at the torso, it's actually based on the concept art because LEGO did not know what the finalized look would be, so they had to base it off of the suit that they shot the movie with, which, of course, was changed digitally for the release that we all saw in theaters. So this is a really cool set with an exclusive Spider-Man. It was the first time we got Vision with the correct color in the stone in his forehead and an exclusive Hawkeye. So not only was this set awesome then, but it's shot up in value and it was hard to find because you could only buy it at Toys R Us and from Lego directly. So a great set with awesome figures that was hard to find. So yeah, definitely one to talk about and definitely a memorable one from this year. Speaking of memorable sets, we have Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, which came out in August. This retailed for $29.99, and of course was the debut of LEGO Doctor Strange, and was the sole set from Doctor Strange. Back at this time, it seemed like the one-off movies very rarely would get more than one set, at least uh, in Doctor Strange's case, but, you know, stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy got more, but, you know, Ant-Man the previous year had only gotten one set, Ant-Man and the Wasp, as we'll see, only got one set, so... I wonder what LEGO's decision is on, like, how big a movie is and how it warrants more sets. But anyways, the three figures were awesome. Doctor Strange had the kind of pushed back hair with the gray on the sides, which is very nice for customs. His cloak at this point was actually one piece pretty much since then. It's been two pieces up until the rubber one that came out in 2021. Then, of course, we have the Ancient One and Mordo, both of which are very cool figures, not only in their own right, but also for making customs. Another big figure this year was the GameStop Silver Centurion Polybag that was a freebie given away if you ordered the LEGO Avengers game for pre-order. That figure is super, super valuable now. I don't think I've ever seen one sell for less than $50 in the last year or two. And we have a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Steve Rogers Captain America, a.k.a. the Hydra Captain America. For some god unknown reason, in 2016, Marvel Comics decided to turn the character of Captain America on his head and say that he'd been an agent of Hydra this entire time. It's literally one of the dumbest comic twists I think I've ever seen, and the twist to undo that because people hated it so much was even more dumb, but I'll let a comics YouTube channel explain that to you. But this was the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive figure for Marvel for the year, and he definitely should be here, and he's our last figure to talk about from the year 2016. Roll the calendar year over to 2017, I have to say that this is probably the weakest of the three years in this video segment. Take some notes, mentally even, and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Starting off the year in January, we had Series 2 of Marvel's Mighty Micros. This gave us our first X-Men set in two years, which was Wolverine and Magneto, 
plus Iron Man versus Thanos. I always love that little Infinity Gauntlet car Thanos drove. And of course, another Spider-Man. And this time, he's fighting off a version of the Scorpion. Now, all of the minifigures from this were actually pretty solid. Uh, this is one of the better minifig waves for the Mighty Micros series, but... I don't think it's the best one. I actually think Series 3, which we'll look at a little later in this video, is the best series of them all. But once again, 2017 is under the microscope here, so let me know if you agree that this was the weakest year of the three we're going to look at today. Now, we also got three regular Avenger sets, the cheapest of which was the Captain America Jet Pursuit. This isn't a great set, but it did have three pretty good minifigures with the pilot Captain America kind of harkening back to the World War II cap. We also got a Super Adaptoid, which had Falcon's wings, kind of an interesting inclusion. And for the longest time, this was our only Kamala Khan Ms. Marvel. Now, we did get one recently in 2022, but that will be talked about in a future video. For right now, this one is, was pretty interesting because she had kind of the long, bendy arms, but I know a lot a lot of people wished that we could have just got a regular figure, and it's kind of wild to me we had to wait half a decade to get that, finally. But this was a pretty good figure back in the day, and for 20 bucks, it's hard to complain about a set like this. Now, this set is probably the fan favorite of these three. This is the Iron Man Detroit Steel Strike set, which came in at $30. We got three minifigures here, Detroit Steel obviously being the alter ego of Justin Hammer. And remember, this set came out at the height of... Uh, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. hype, so of course we got our only Lego Agent Coulson, and he did come with his flying car Lola. I think you got a lot of value in this, but this did start the trend of getting comic book style Iron Mans with this new helmet, which is not as well loved as the helmet that opens from the MCU sets. And this is considered one of the worst Lego Marvel sets of all time. I would have to agree, this is Hulk versus Red Hulk. At $60, you got two Big Fig Hulks and two regular minifigs of the two different versions of She-Hulk. Now, as far as the minifigures are concerned, they are all pretty fantastic. I actually think that they're all really great figures. I can't hardly imagine us ever getting Red She-Hulk again unless she appears in She-Hulk or Red Hulk for that matter. But with that being said, this set was definitely overpriced at $60, not a lot of play value, and definitely one of the worst from LEGO Marvel from pretty much any year, honestly. The first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out in 2014, so three years later we got the sequel, and we did get several LEGO sets to coincide with it. Let's take a look at those now. First, there was a small poly bag. I can't find what the price was, but it's just hard to complain about a poly bag. I don't know if this was a freebie or maybe just three, four, five dollars, but anyway, it slices. It's still pretty cool, and it's a nice little build. Coming in at $20, we have the Ravager Attack. Now, this was our first way to get the new version of Rocket Raccoon, which had a big grin. We got Mantis in this set, and she was exclusive to any set for four years until they remade her in the Infinity Saga wave. And this is our only LEGO Taser Face. So, definitely a lot of great minifigures here, especially for $20, and I think that this set gets slept on a lot. Pretty great for the price. Speaking of sleeper sets, we have Aisha's Revenge coming in at $30, and this was a great way to get the new Star-Lord figure, the only set ever to include Yondu. It came with Aisha and Baby Groot in his red jumpsuit. As far as the build goes, it's really solid, and this is straight out of the final battle from the movie. I'm still kind of blown away we never got an official Ego. If we did, I'm sure he would have come in this set, but it's still a really solid set and absolutely one of my favorite from this wave, if not my favorite, if I'm being honest. Then we get the Milano versus the Abelisk. Now, at $50, I think that this was an absolutely awesome set. Uh, it was a great way to get Drax. We got the battle-damaged Nebula, a new version of Star-Lord, a new version of Gamora, and Baby Groot without his jacket on. So, all really stellar figures. The Abelisk build is awesome, and... You know, I think that this honestly could have been scaled up to an $100 set, but I love the fact that at some point there was an affordable version of this set on store shelves for LEGO fans of all budgets. So I definitely like this one a lot, and yeah, that rounds out all of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 sets, and as you can see, I think that they really, really did a nice job with these. 
I think it's easy to forget how great of a year 2017 was for the MCU. We got Guardians, as we know, Spider-Man Homecoming, the MCU solo debut of Spider-Man, and Thor Ragnarok, which we'll look at here in a minute. But Spider-Man Homecoming did have two really, really nice sets for their price points. The first of which was a $20 set, the ATM Heist Battle. I love this set's many figures, and I think that it was really, really well valued at $20. It's a great, relatively cheap way to get Spider-Man, and the two goons wearing Avengers masks really sealed the deal. I love this set, and as far as $20 Marvel sets go, I still think this is one of the best ever. Unfortunately, I don't think that Beware the Vulture has aged particularly well, especially since we've gotten a better version of Vulture from this movie, and Shocker was a relatively forgettable villain, but, you know, it's still a fine set, but at $40, getting an exclusive Iron Man was a nice touch, and it was our only Vulture for a long time, well, MCU Vulture, that is, so, you know, it's not a bad set, I just don't think it's aged particularly well. What do you guys think? Thor Ragnarok was such a surprise hit this year. I really, really loved the movie. It's aged really well, and of course, we did get several Lego sets from it. Although, all these years later, especially with the Infinity Saga wave, I can't believe we haven't got a Thor vs. Surger set yet, but a guy can dream, right? Anyway, our first set from this wave, which was only two sets in general, was the Ultimate Battle for Asgard. It came with the Grandmaster's Party Ship and was $49.99 with 400 pieces even. Pretty cool. Anyways, it came with six minifigures. Can you believe that? A lot of them remain exclusive to this day, including Hela, the battle version of Thor, Bruce Banner is not exclusive, but a nice figure regardless. Valkyrie, which we did get another version, so she's not technically exclusive, but this version is. And there were two figures here called Berserkers. I bet you forgot about those, didn't you? <laughs> now this one, I think, will catch a lot of heat. I really, really like this set, the Thor vs. Hulk Arena Clash. But over the years, I feel like I've seen people say that they thought this set was overpriced, it's trash, so I'm curious what you guys think now with several years of hindsight. It was $60, it came with 5 minifigures and 492 pieces, and every minifigure in this set is exclusive to this set. That would be the Warrior Thor or Arena Thor, Loki from Ragnarok, the Gladiator Hulk, the Grandmaster, and the Sakarian Warrior Soldier Guy. I think all of these figures are awesome, and honestly, I think the set is pretty cool, and if you look on the far left and far right sides of the set, you could see that there were clips, so if you bought multiples of this, you could build a big giant arena. Now, I haven't seen anybody do that, I'm just saying that you could, and uh, I definitely don't think it'd be worth buying seven or eight of these to make a giant arena, but it is a cool set, in my opinion, all these years later. When the LEGO Avengers video game came out this year, there was a pack-in for the Deluxe version. Now, this was LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, and if you bought the Deluxe version, you got a bigger box, and that included this Giant Man Hank Pym exclusive minifigure. I'm surprised he's not worth more just given how rare he is, but he is still pretty awesome and one of my favorite Ant-Man related figures to date. Now, as the year rounded out, we did get a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Deadpool Duck. Now, this is probably one of my least favorite Marvel San Diego exclusives, because I think it's just a little too random, the whole Deadpool Duck idea. But at the same time, I'm so glad they didn't put some amazing figure like, I don't know, like Colossus or Cyclops or somebody that we really, really want a good version of you know, behind the paywall of San Diego Comic-Con, which means most of us would never get it. So I'm fine with a random character like this being so exclusive, but that being said, I also don't really like it that much either. Now we're coming to 2018, which is the last chapter of this third part of my series. Now, 2017, in retrospect, was not so bad, but 2018 was so unbelievably awesome. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year, it was pretty much all hitters. So, at the beginning of the year, we had the third and final series of the Marvel Mighty Micros. This gave us Sandman vs. Scarlet Spider, Star-Lord vs. Nebula, and Thor vs. Loki. I love all of these sets, all of these figures, at $10 a piece. It's crazy because Mighty Micros finally just hit its stride, if you ask me, and then it got cancelled. So, definitely a bummer, and I actually did a full video on the Mighty Micros history if you are curious about that, so you could go check that out. But let's transition into our first MCU movie of the year that brought us new sets. 
So January 1st brought us the Black Panther sets, and the movie came out in February, so relatively quick release time of LEGO sets before the movie. Generally, it's like two months sometimes, but anyways, Black Panther was an absolutely massive smash hit, and all of the sets from the movie delivered as well. Now, similar to Guardians 2, we did get a little poly bag here. This was $5, limited retail release. I don't remember ever seeing this, but I think it showed up at some Targets, if I'm not mistaken. Now, continuing the trend from Homecoming, having an awesome $20 set, the Rhino Face-Off by the Mine was really great. Not only did you get three main character minifigs, but you got some really useful pieces, like the railroad track for the mine, all those cool translucent pieces, and of course, the Rhino build is pretty cool in and of itself. The Black Panther Powered Up suit here should have been purple, but it was based on concept art, kind of like Spider-Man from Civil War in an earlier segment here, so unfortunately it's not accurate by the movie standards, but it still looks pretty darn cool. We get Okoye here as well as Killmonger in his final battle suit, and everything here just looks great. The Royal Talon Fighter Attack was only $30, so getting four minifigures and all of these really nice different sloped black pieces are really, really awesome, and it made for a great value set. Now, as far as the minifigures are concerned, we did get a Black Panther in his movie suit, which would later be reused for Infinity War just a few months later. We get Nakia in her red suit, we also get Ulysses Claw, and Killmonger with his tribal mask on. Now, this mask was actually like a rubbery texture, very, very nice, and I just think that this set really delivered for 30 bucks. What do you guys think? And now this brings us up to Avengers Infinity War. Now, these sets were amazing, and living through the hype of this movie is truly something I wonder if we'll ever get to experience again. Spider-Man No Way Home felt a lot like this, but this was just an entirely different beast. Getting hyped with your friends, checking the store for toys all the time. Ugh, so awesome. Anyways... Once again, we do get a little poly bag to start things off. This is the Guardian's ship. Pretty cheap little set. Not too much to say. Just a nice little poly bag to kick things off. Now, there actually are not too many $10 Marvel sets that are not Mighty Micros or Mechs. That was a lot of M's. <laughs> but anyways, the Outrider Dropship Attack is a great example of what Marvel can do in a $10 set. We get a Black Widow and Captain America, which are both exclusive to this set. Very, very cool. And we get not one, but two Outriders. You're going to get sick of these guys pretty quick because they came in pretty much every set from Endgame and every set from Infinity War. So, yeah, it definitely, definitely was uh, a little much to get so many of these guys. I started to feel as overwhelmed as the Avengers did in the final battle. <laughs> The $20 set from this wave is Thor's Weapon Quest, an awesome set which I think will be worth a lot of money someday if you have any of these sealed. It came with Teenage Groot, Rocket Raccoon, the exact same one from Guardians 2, and Thor from Infinity War. I love how B.A. Thor looks. Uh, I guess I can swear here on the channel, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> but it's a great set for $20 and definitely continues the trend of awesome sets right in this price range. I pretty much think every single set from the Infinity War wave was killer, so let's see what's up next. The Corvus Glaive Thresher Attack. This is a really cool one because it's a big gate from Wakanda, and it came with a lot of really nice figures as well. I feel like I never saw this set in stores after it first released. Maybe it was just super popular, maybe it's rare, I don't know. But we get Black Panther, the same one from the Black Panther movie set. We get Vision with the corrected yellow Mind Stone. We get Corvus Glaive, who's exclusive to this set. An Outrider, I told you these guys would be showing up a lot. And we get Shuri, who is exclusive to this set. What a great set. Man, so good. Here we have the Hulkbuster Smash-Up, which came with four minifigures in this cool, like, ball shooter thing. I, it's hard to explain what that is, but you basically would pinch those two arms together and it would shoot out a little Technic ball. As far as the minifigures go, we have Proxima Midnight, who was exclusive to this set, Bruce Banner, who is returning from Thor Ragnarok, you guessed it, another Outrider, and a very nice version of Falcon with a brick-built wing backpack. This set was really great for $30, one of the better Hulkbusters from over the years, and unfortunately it does continue that trend of LEGO giving us a million Hulkbusters, but it's still pretty nice, all things considered. 
This is a set that I really feel like is going to get forgotten in history. This is the Thanos Ultimate Battle. This was the only way to get MCU Thanos, uh, from this wave at least. It did come with a very cool jetpack Iron Man. We got Star-Lord, who is pretty much exactly the same from Volume 2, and an exclusive Gamora this time around. So, the figures were all real nice, but the set, unfortunately, has been outdone in time by the Infinity Saga version of the Guardians ship, which absolutely dwarfs this. It's a much better set. I think it's a better value set as well. But I think that this one was cool because you could attach the escape pod from Thor's weapon quest to the back of this and combine your sets. Lego, and in particular Lego Marvel, does not offer, you know, interset connectivity very often like that. So when it does happen, I really enjoy it. I wish it happened more. And I love that it happened for this set, even if, like I said, it's probably going to get forgotten in time. Now, the irony is the next set is probably one that will be remembered for all time, and that is the Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown. Now, this had almost entirely exclusive minifigures, and on the left side, you built Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum, and on the right side, the bottom floor was a pizza shop, and the top two floors were supposed to be Peter Parker's apartment. What a great idea to give you lots of great play features, and the minifigures were all stellar. Iron Man was not exclusive to this. He also came in the previous set. However, uh, we get Call Obsidian as a big fig who is exclusive, a Doctor Strange that's exclusive to this set. We get Ebony Maw, who is exclusive, as well as the very, very rare and very desirable Iron Spider minifigure. He's worth a absolute fortune now after the suit, you know, continued to be used after this movie and was never in a Lego set again, and it's just really awesome. I love this set. At $100, it's worth every penny. These days, as of this video being made in 2022, it's actually worth closer to two to $200 uh, sealed, but... What a great set. I think it's just going to continue to go up in value, and it's absolutely one of my top five LEGO Marvel sets ever. No doubt about it. We're really bouncing back and forth here to go from a set that's going to get forgotten to a set that'll be remembered forever to a set that pretty much most fans don't like. This is the UCS-style Hulkbuster Ultron Edition, which was $120.00. And even to this day, I'm just not into this figure. You know, it was a decently fun build. It displays pretty well, but it was just unnecessary. Now, this is a set that, unfortunately, a lot of people missed out on. This is the Marvel Super Heroes minifigure collection from Infinity War, and it was a promotional set that you could get at Toys R Us for something that they used to do called Bricktober. Now, not only were the Bricktober packs really rare just by nature of what they were, but this was coming at a time where there was a lot of uncertainty for Toys R Us, and I from what I remember at least, it was not showing up at a lot of Toys R Us's. In fact, I never saw it in person. I paid $100 for it when it was new uh, coming out, and now some of these figures are worth 50 to 70 on their own. So it's pretty wild. It's a great set. All four figures are awesome with great printing all over the arms and legs. You know, it's just a great set, but unfortunately, a lot of people probably missed out on this one. So yeah. Now, late in the summer, we did get an Ant-Man and the Wasp set. I love this movie, and I actually got to attend the premiere of this movie in Hollywood as a fan. I should really make a video talking about that story someday, but let's talk about the Lego set for now. The $20 200-piece Quantum Realm Explorers gave us an Ant-Man, Wasp, and the Ghost figure. All three of these were pretty awesome, but unfortunately, it seems like nobody liked this movie at the level I did, so I feel like this set kind of gets forgotten, but to date, it's our only Wasp, so until Ant-Man 3 comes out, this is probably the only Wasp MCU style that we're going to have available for a while. Okay, so technically there was one other set that you could get Wasp in, but considering it's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, I would not advise that this be the way you try to get Wasp. There's much cheaper alternatives. <laughs> And we had one more San Diego Comic-Con exclusive this year, and that was Sheriff Deadpool. Now, this is a really cool one. I don't know if he is from a specific comic or anything. And again, I think that this is the way that the San Diego Comic-Con figure should have been held all along. Give us some goofy, different versions of characters that would be cool to have, but aren't going to leave massive holes in your collection if you don't get them. 
And with that, that brings us to the end of part three of the history of LEGO Marvel. This covered the years 2016 through 2018, and I want to know, which of these three years do you think was the best? Drop a comment down below, I can't wait to hear that, and I'll be working on part four, which will be 2019 through 2021 very soon. So I'm really excited to unpack that. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for checking out today's video. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. And while you're here, maybe check out one of my other videos.